Welcome to Prophecy Countdown with author and pastor Kenneth Baer. Join us every week for the latest updates on what the Bible has to say about the events, the characters, and prophetic signs of the return of Jesus Christ and His coming kingdom. Make sure you not only subscribe, but like your favorite episodes and share it with your friends. Now, on with the broadcast. Hi, welcome today to our Sunday message here at Faith Dialogue and our podcast called Prophecy Countdown. I'm Pastor Ken, and we provide two updates, two updates each week on both our video and audio channels on this channel called Prophecy Countdown. On Sundays, we're presently going through the Gospel of Matthew, and we go through chapter by chapter and, and verse by verse. That way we don't miss anything. Uh, today, my message is on Matthew chapter 12, verses 33 through 37, and the topic of my message is the, the witness of your words. The witness of your words. Now on Wednesdays, our updates are always prophecy related, and typically uh, we get uh, questions from our video and listening audience, people like you. You can send an email to us at any time at prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. I personally answer every single email that comes into us, and uh, we'd love to get your questions. I'd love to be able to, to help you in any way I possibly can. Uh, when you have a question, most likely other people have questions too. And that way we provide a, a service. We provide updates and, and answers to questions that people have. So uh, again, if you have a question, please email us at prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. Today is Sunday. Uh, at least this is premiering on Sunday, so let's get to the lesson today. Again, our lesson is out of Matthew chapter 12, verses 30 through 30, 33 through 37, uh, and the title of my message is The Witness of Your Words. Let me read this to you beginning in verse 33. Jesus says, Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasures brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it on the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned." So we're in Matthew chapter 12, and Jesus has been interacting with the religious leaders. These are likely the Pharisees and, and, and also some Sadducees. Uh, by this time in, the, in Jesus' ministry, these Pharisees and Sadducees have determined that Jesus needs to go. Uh, he needs to be eliminated. In verse 14 of chapter 12, for example, the apostle Matthew tells us this. He says, then the Pharisees went out and took counsel against him how they may destroy him. So what was Jesus doing? Well, he was teaching. Uh, he was healing. Uh, he had just driven out a, a, demon, a demon from a man that was both blind and mute. However, the Pharisees always found fa fault in anything that Jesus was doing, and they wanted to destroy him. They said that Jesus was in league with the devil. He would cast out demons by Beelzebub, the prince of demons. Now, Jesus argued successfully just before this that a kingdom divided uh, against itself could not stand. And then he went on to warn these same Pharisees that there were dire consequences of blasphemy, as the Holy Spirit had given them ample evidence to understand that Jesus was, in fact, the Messiah, was the Son of God, and um, they would have all the evidence they needed to believe that Jesus was the Christ and the long-awaited Messiah. Now, in the scriptures today, Jesus is still referring to the Pharisees. If you noticed, he called them the brood of vipers. He's definitely talking to the Pharisees. But he's also speaking about what I call the witness of your words, witness of our words. Um, these are words that come out of our, our mouth. Jesus has much to say uh, about what we say, and this applies to all of us because we are all known by our, our words, just as we're known by our actions. Let's take a look at these verses and dig into the important teaching that Jesus has for us on the witness of our words. First, Jesus mentions good trees and good fruit. 
in the context of also there are bad trees and, and bad fruit. The, the very first thing that Jesus is telling us here is that our words are a witness to what actually is in our hearts. You know, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, Jesus says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I remember first hearing this, this was probably 40 years ago, and I, and I started thinking about that, that it's, it's what's in our heart that eventually comes out of our, our mouths. You know, you can put on your Sunday face, you can try to say the right things, but if it's in your heart, it's eventually gonna get out. Our, our words are a direct reflection of our innermost thoughts, our feelings and character. They reveal the true condition of our hearts. So often a person's true character comes to light when they, they say something when they think no one important is listening or the microphone isn't turned on. People cannot hear them, but their words reveal what's truly in their hearts. Uh, people often use flattering words when they, they want something. You know, when we're in public or we're talking to people, we'll use flattering words. These words uh, are used to manipulate, to distract us from the truth, to, to gain favor or influence. That's flattering words. But here's the thing about flattering words. They're, they're insincere. I, I've known people that always have nice things to say, always have nice things to say, but actually what they're doing is they're, they're, they're using flattering words. They're very insincere. People uh, that use flattery and flattering words often are found out uh, because their mouths are constantly open. And it, what happens is the treachery that's in their heart actually spills out of their mouth, and they are, they are found out to be who they truly are. Jesus says this in 35, he says, in verse 35, he says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. Again, Jesus is comparing to this to what we see in trees, good fruit and bad fruit from good trees and, and bad trees. A good man brings forth good things. An evil man brings forth evil things. You know, it, it's interesting that so often um, the words of Jesus and the words in the Bible are black and white. It's good versus evil. The witness of good versus evil, and, and it's all in the tongue. Uh, it's in the witness of our, of our words. That's why this, this teaching of Jesus is, is so critical and so important for us today. Now, if you think that you have a tongue issue, and you know, I know a number of people that feel that they have a tongue issue, they, they slip, that's what they say, oh, I can't change my tongue, it's just the way I, I teach and the way I talk, and, and sometimes those words slip out. And I would say, no, you don't have a tongue issue. What you have, according to Jesus, is you have a, a heart issue. You need to change your heart. You need to get your heart right. Uh, this is a problem with the, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, the very people that should have been looking for and embracing the Messiah. The, their heart was wicked. You know, in Jeremiah chapter 17, the old prophet tells us, he says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? You know, you need to get your heart right with God. If you get your heart right with God, the rest of your being comes in line with what your heart is doing. Um, now next, Jesus tells us that we have to be careful as well and the witness of our idle words. And this is what he says in verse 36. He says, he says, I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it on the day of judgment. The term idle words refers to words that are, that are empty. Thoughtless, lacking in sincerity, truth. They, they're not meant to go anywhere. Our, our witness of these words is, is through carelessness. Uh, my mom used to tell me, I remember she said, uh, to engage my brain before my mouth, uh, uh, before my mouth, engage my brain before my mouth. And she was right. I mean, I remember that, that so well. That was wisdom. Uh, the wisdom of our words should be uh, purposeful, truthful. Uh, they, uh, the, our witness and the words that we speak, speak should be used for good rather than being filled with falsehoods, gossip, and malicious intent. Notice Jesus tells us that on the day of judgment, we will be judged for every word that we speak. And I believe that's true for both Christians and, and non-Christians, for believers and non-believers, for sinners as well as saints. 
You know, we, we, we Christians, we take a look at the, at the Bible and we know that we're saved and, and that we're, we're declared righteous, uh, but there is a Bema Seat judgment. There's a Bema Seat judgment that's coming, and I believe that, that we'll still be held accountable for the words that we speak, not to either salvation or, or, um, um, or, or damnation, uh, but we will be held uh, accountable. Now, you may think to yourself, now, now, come on, pastor, none of this fire and brimstone stuff. Yeah, I, I know, Jesus loves us, my friends, that's true, and he died for us, but we need to remember uh, that just like these Pharisees, these religious leaders, we need to, all need to receive the gift of grace, this gift of forgiveness that's available to us because of Jesus Christ. You know, the Pharisees should have embraced Jesus as the Messiah, but they did not. They should have embraced him as the Savior that would die for their sins on Calvary, but they failed to do so. Um, Jesus paid a price that, that we could not possibly pay. This, this, this Savior, this Jesus, died on the cross and he rose on the third day. He ascended into heaven. He's coming back again. When we embrace that, we receive Jesus. And in the Gospel of John, it says, to those that received him, he gave them right to become children of God. And that's the power of the words. It's how we receive Jesus is, is how we speak, what's in our heart that comes out through our mouth. In verse 37, Jesus said, for by your words you will be justified and by your words you'll be condemned. And this is the witness of our words, the witness of your words. Our words should be the witness of our, of our faith. You know, there's a saying today that's popular, and, it's a, and you hear it all too often, and it's basically this. It says, if you see something, say something, and that has nothing to do with religion or church or the Bible. It's, it's if you see something, say something. Alert other people because we live in a community, and if you see something, you need to say something. Well, this also is true if, of the witness of our faith. If, if you have experienced Jesus Christ, if you've known him as your Savior and your Lord, you need to have that witness as well. You need to say something. Uh, the relationship with Jesus is always one-to-one. -one. It's not something you inherit from your family. It's not something that you can just pick up from other people. It's a, re it's a witness that the Holy Spirit uh, is the witness to you of who Jesus truly is, that Jesus took the penalty of, of your sins. It's not that he went to the cross for the sins of mankind, that's true, but he also went to the cross for your sin. The Bible is very clear that we're not to be silent when it comes to this, this witness. Just as Jesus tells us that by our words we'll be justified and then by our words we'll be condemned, the Apostle Paul tells us this in, in Romans chapter 10, verse nine. And I don't believe in formula salvation, but if there's ever gonna be a formula, this is it. The Apostle Paul says this, he says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You notice that it's confessing with your Mouth. You believe in your heart. How does this fit in the scripture? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. Our confession of faith in Jesus is the foundation of our Christian testimony. It's the foundation of our journey. Uh, our, the, our words need to be consistent with our, with our belief. As witnesses for Christ, we're called to share the good news. You know, Jesus says, he told his disciples, and he tells us, he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's what we need to do. That's called the Great Commission. We, and our words are, are necessary in order to make other disciples, in order to pass our faith on to our children, to our neighbors, to our friends. To be a witness literally means to be opening your mouth and sharing Jesus. It, it begins with our words. Bible says that they justify us and they also will condemn us. So my friends, I, just, I would just encourage you uh, to make sure that you have made Jesus the Lord of your life. Like I said, I, I don't believe in formula salvation, that you say a certain words and you're saved, not at all. It, it's the power of the Holy Spirit that comes in your life, the witness of Jesus that the Holy Spirit gives. Um, your heart begins to, to change. 
But my friends, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I would pray that you would ask him into your life. We use our words to say that. I'm going to say a simple prayer. I don't usually do this, but I'm going to just say a simple prayer. And you can repeat it, and you also can experience what it means to receive Jesus. So why don't you pray with me? Father God, I believe that Jesus is the Christ. I pray that my sins are forgiven, that the death that he paid for, that he, the death that he suffered on Calvary and his ascent, his resurrection and ascension would, would cover my sins, that I would be forgiven, that the Holy Spirit would come into my life and quicken me, allow me to be a, a new believer. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. My friends, if you prayed that prayer, I can tell you that your sins are forgiven and that you are a new creation. Now, I want you to do this. I want you to be a witness to that and go and tell somebody. Did you know that that's what baptism is, by the way? We just had baptism in the church last week. There were 39 people that were baptized. Baptism is a witness. It's a witness of our faith. God bless you. Let me pray, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Father God, I want to thank you, Lord, for who you are. Nearly every day, it's common to see, read, or hear something about the end of the world, the apocalypse, or end times. Author and pastor Kenneth Baer's The Apocalypse and Coming Kingdom zooms in and breaks down biblical prophecy as it relates to Jesus' imminent return and the coming seven-year period, including the Great Tribulation. Available in both paperback and Kindle versions. Get your copy on Amazon or at Barnes & Noble and select Christian bookstores. The title again is The Apocalypse and Coming Kingdom. You can also find it listed by author Kenneth Baer. Get your copy today. Thank you for joining us on Prophecy Countdown with Pastor Ken Baer. Don't leave without first sharing the latest episode with your friends. Be sure to join us again for the latest updates on Prophecy Countdown.